Yes. Yes, we're live. Okay, let me try adding Miss Suarez. Uh. <laughs> this is so funny. Hello. Oh my God. Good, how are you? Good, I'm so happy to have you here with me. Woo! <laughs> how are you? I am great. Oh my gosh. I'm like, oh my gosh, I ran to the bathroom real quick because I'm like, okay, quick bathroom break before we start. Yeah, I put on I put on a little bit of Usher confessions. <laughs> Wait, I wanna did you get your did you get your alcohol? <laughs> I'm gonna get mine. Wait. Have you made your drink yet? No, I'm actually gonna do um, a little sangria. What are you gonna prepare? I'm doing, so this is like my favorite Moscato from Trader Joe's. And then uh -huh. Valentine's, my girlfriend showed me to mix this blood orange soda with it. And it's like the perfect combo. So I'm gonna do- I love it. I know. I well, okay, so you. I'm so happy that you decided to join me because I really wanted to start doing a few lives and I thought this was an amazing subject. I know that you've always been very, very like open about your relationships. You brought all your, your experiences to the gram and you've never been like shy about talking about everything that has happened to you since baby number one. I think I've been with you on your journey. You started using our products since your first baby. So I've been almost experiencing all every every time your your relationships and everything. Me on my end, um, I don't usually talk too much about my relationships on Instagram. Um, but I think we've both talking on private. We've seen that we have many similar issues in regards to dating life, and I feel that sometimes for us, like then when we're when we are so much online and we share so much of our lives on, on the, on Instagram, mm -hmm. I think that it's sometimes difficult to have like relationships or I don't know, how do you feel about that? Do you think that ever since you've been more on Instagram and sharing more your life and things like that, have relationships been easier? Do you think that actually affects you social media or not really? It is so hard to be a person on social media with a large following. Um, just because like that, very transparent. So you almost know everything that's going on in my life. Like, you know who's in my life. You know if I'm dating someone. Um, they, like, like I can't hide anything. You know, like mm -hmm. I, um, like my past really daughter's dads. Like, like people knew who they were. So if you see us around town, like people knew him or what I like. Uh -huh. You're you're Gigi's dad. You know or. Um, so it was just, it's hard to like keep things personal and try to, um, not, not say certain things, but, um, I think it's just best to be more transparent. It's easier to be transparent. It's harder to hide things. Uh-huh. On my end, I feel, um, I actually like the minute that I like somebody, I block them. <laughs> I don't like people, like I feel, this is how I feel personally. The moment that I start talking to somebody and they follow me on this Instagram, I feel that it's like me going to the guy's office and just sitting there and watching him work every day. Like to me, it's so, I don't know, I, I, don't, I don't like it. I don't like when people follow me on in th this Instagram because it's like everything I expose from my morning routine, what I eat, how I work out, my life, my family life. So I like to keep that privacy, like between the person that I like, I want somebody to text me and for me to get excited. Not that they already saw everything that I saw during the day. So th the moment that I like somebody, I swear, I don't even like speaking to them about like Vanna Belt or anything because I don't know, I, I like like getting to know someone like a, a friend of mine uh, not too long ago told me good thing about not having Instagram or not having someone on Instagram is that you go there and you already see what they ate, what they're wearing, what they did this morning, what they're going to do this afternoon. So there's not really like that excitement of like speaking with somebody on the phone or getting a text message. Yeah. So usually that has been honestly my strategy. And also because I'm very stalkerish, I will say that I am very, very <laughs> stalkerish. So I just try to avoid that. 
to the max now. So the, I don't like to have their Instagram for them not to have mine. Like I don't like social media because it becomes a headache for me. I was actually, I'm going to tell you guys this secret. I was once on a show on Bravo. Was it Bravo? What was it? And it was called Find Me My Man. <laughs> And the yeah. whole purpose, the whole purpose of the show was to show different types of women and what you shouldn't be. And I was on the show, the cyber stalker. <laughs> so it's this life coach, like this relationship coach. And she goes there and she, she just starts telling me like, how are you with guys? Like, what do you do when you meet them? And, and I'm like, the first thing I do is Google them. <laughs> like, I want to know what they're doing. Like, I go on their Instagram. I want to see what's their lifestyle. Like, what do they do on the weekend? Like, to see if it's a match. So, honestly, that also, and another thing that women do a lot, I think, is about the signs. You well, always, the first thing that a woman asks is, what's your zodiac sign? Yeah. So, the last person that I was talking to, like, they told me, like, no, I don't want to tell you my sign. And to be honest, I think that was so attractive because in my mind, I do feel that women, we block ourselves sometimes. And we're like, oh, I'm an Aries and he's a Leo. No, we're not going to work out. Yeah. Or you immediately, oh, my ex was a Leo. So, oh my God, I'm going to have the same experience. So or mentally you block yourself. It's like, oh, I'm not going to tell her because it's going to say we're on top. Yeah. Of <laughs> <laughs> so what are, what are the, the main characteristics you look for in a man? Oh, yeah, yeah. We're just going to jump into it. Let's jump into are it. Are we start on the external or internal? Everything like water because yeah, external and internal both at the same time. Ay, ay, ay. Um, okay, hold on. I need to take you guys. I put you guys with me into my office because this is going okay. To I'm actually gonna put here because sorry, I got my drink. I had to make my drink, and then I was like, okay. I told my girls we're having grown up talk. So <laughs> <laughs> I need to do my. Hold on, I want to put my. Okay. Okay, guys. Now, if you okay, ever, now, if you grown up talk, if, if you guys ever want a good sangria, this is it. I am telling you, this is what I always drink, and I just mix it with some berries, and that's it. You don't need anything else. This wine is so delicious. It's Lambrusco, and that's what I always have. I'm so glad we both dress in our pajamas. Yeah, I was like, I want to be comfortable. Like, I just want to. I'm doing my drink here in the kitchen, but I'm moving soon to my bedroom. Because I want to be comfortable with this with this conversation. This conversation is something that I've been wanting to have for a while, so I definitely want to get comfortable. Yes, okay, but that's yes, but hold on, I have to move the computer. Hi, girls. How's everyone there? <laughs> There's two minutes. Oh my gosh, I don't have Gigi. That's her dad. I just have the older girls. But they're fine. Hold on, I want to get. Let me bring the computer because I have the questions there. I know I wrote myself a few little post-it notes so I can like uh, make sure that we answer some of these questions that we're asking. Okay, what do I look for in a guy? Um, okay. I would comment on what you were saying about how it's before because you you don't want them to see what you're doing during the day so uh -huh. this last guy that i just dated uh he had no social media so he mm -hmm. like had a Facebook, wasn't active on it so he had no instagram never had instagram doesn't know me from instagram you know like you know how you know me from instagram, instagram is, i'm used to people knowing me from instagram i'm used to people just casually like oh hey how did you like how did you like like they know everything that I'm doing with my girls at all times he did not and I found like it was harder because he would always be like oh how, how was your day what you do today and I'm like what do you mean like I I, I already posted like everything I did today like <laughs> gym today didn't you see my workout like I posted I like cook this today so it was like it was it was like I had to repeat everything I already said and sometimes I, I, I told him a few times, like, hey, like, why don't you just get an Instagram, even if it's, like, like not that you're following a bunch of people, but just, like, you can keep up with me. Because if you're interested in me, I feel like you should be interested in what that person's doing. I want him. You wanted him to have an Instagram and, and yeah, I to have him there. Involved so that I'm not having to repeat myself or not having to, like, 
he doesn't get to see that side of me. And I just feel like if you genuinely were interested in someone, wouldn't you want to see every aspect of that uh -huh. person? He, he did not get on social media. So I was like, okay, I respect that. Um, so I already see the red flags. Okay. Okay. But okay. This is the thing. All my exes had Instagram. Obviously. Okay. You guys know last year I dated someone that's very popular on Instagram. Mm -hmm. So it was my very first time dating someone that was not on social media. So that was my very first experience with that. And I wanted to try it, you know, mm -hmm. like I've had the public relationship. I've had the social media thing. It didn't work. So I wanted to try this, you know? Like, so how did you feel about that? You think you like better, you would like somebody better to be on Instagram and like to, what about the fitness part? Would you rather have somebody that's into fitness as well? Because that was one of the questions that a lot of people had. If we want to have somebody that's into fitness, um, entrepreneurs, influencers, so they kind of like understand where we're coming from, or do we prefer a, another type of, of person? I, on my end, I don't like somebody on Instagram. I, <laughs> I swear. I wish that, that, that they have didn't say, yeah, I, I want someone yeah. to have Instagram, but not to be like an influencer, not to be like like I am, because I feel that you need like a balance. And if, if we're both in, on the same thing, like for me, I don't think it, it would work out. Like I'd rather be with somebody that's not an influencer. I do would want to have, like I would want to have uh, somebody that is an entrepreneur because it matches like my lifestyle like i want somebody that has the liberty and the freedom like to do things when i want to do them as well or today we want to take the both the day off so i that part i do i would like in reference to what we were saying before like the the aspects that i would want oh you never said what aspects do you like in a guy I, yeah yeah no you go you go you go <laughs> I'm, I'm, I have them. I'm telling you them because I swear I've taken my time to like write all these things down. Like every time I've met somebody recently, like he's more closer to what I'm looking for. Like I've become, I feel that you, yeah. I got Cupid. This is a clear example. Since I got Cupid, I realized that you have to be very specific with what you want and request it from the universe, from God, from whatever it is that you believe in. You have to know what you want and ask for it and not consistently. Oh, I want it. I want it. No. You yeah. ask for it and that's it. But for example, oh, with Cupid, like I swear that oh, happened. He's that, exactly what I wanted. Huh? Exactly how you're saying. You have to know exactly what you want. Yeah. And be specific with it. And when you don't see it in a guy. Exactly. Immediately. Yeah. Exactly. No. Yeah, and now we're not, we can't start settling. That's exactly. You and we can't, we can't continue wasting time. Like in the past, in my 20s, you would be like, I'm not going to marry him. I don't care. Like, you would think like that because honestly, you were just in your 20s. You're like, I'm not going to marry him. So he can have an, a, a hundred and one red flags and you could, you would still be there. But now I can't think like that. Like, I, this could possibly be the so, person that I'm going to spend the rest of my life with. I so I'm, so I become picky. I'm so opposite of you because like you're saying, when I was younger, it was the opposite because I didn't know what I wanted. So I'm like, okay, we're getting married. Like my first boyfriend, we're getting married. I didn't oh my know God. I wasn't yeah. Now that I'm older and I'm like, oh, no, nope, th nope, he doesn't have that. He doesn't have this. Like, the more I date, the more I realize, like, no. They're saying that you're cutting off. Is it? Yeah. So my reception or you just can't hear me? Crystal, Party. you're copying. Crystal, you're let, cutting let off. Me go, let me go kick my kids off of their internet and see if it helps. Hold on. Okay. Off the internet because it's Kaylee. Turn off the two iPads. It's kicking me off the internet and mine. All the all the internet on. Hold on. She's she's gonna switch. Do you guys hear me well? Let me know if, if you guys hear me well or if it's just Crystal that's cutting off. Do you guys hear me? I'm like I'm back. Do you, can you see me or am I a blur? I I hear you and see you perfectly, but I don't know if. The rest of the girls are. Do you guys hear us perfectly now? Give us a thumbs up. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So you're saying that in the past you had, you were like, I didn't know what I wanted. So that's uh -huh. why when I, I was just like, oh yeah, we're getting married. How you said you're like, oh, you were younger. You weren't thinking about marriage. Mine was yeah. just, I grew up like that was just what you did. You just mm -hmm. got married and that was like what you had to do. Uh huh. And, don't have to do it in that order it's okay mm -hmm. to not like 
do that. I, I felt like I kept rushing that so many times. I kept rushing into the next relationship because I was, that's the goal. I have to get married. Mm -hmm. have, that's my purpose, you know? Now I'm like, no. <laughs> yeah. So what exactly are you looking for right now? Like in, in your next relationship, what exactly do you, do you look to, or are you looking to find in a guy? Um, like you said, I, I need someone, maybe he doesn't necessarily have to be like a social media influencer, but he has to be someone that, um, kind of can add to my life, you know, someone that can sink into my life because my mm -hmm. life is so much so social media that, um, like maybe he's good with pictures. Maybe he's, um, he's an adventurous person that's always down for adventures and it helps me because, you know, like I, I need to be out and about and, you know, it's my part of my lifestyle. Um, so I need someone that I have found like it would be easier if he wasn't like a nine to five office job type guy. Um, obviously into fitness because that's a big part of my life. And I just noticed like, I'm just more attracted to someone that is physically fit. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just more like, it's just longevity. At the end of the day, like I, I really admire and respect someone that takes care of themselves. Oh my God. Yeah. See those, you are saying right now, the things that my, I have four qualities and this is what I always look in somebody. One chemistry. I need to desire the person. I need to look at him and be like, damn, that's my man. Number two, admiration. I don't care if he's rich. I don't care whatever, but I need to admire what he does. I need to see him being like motivated, like wanting to achieve things in life. Like I want to walk into a room and say, this is my mother boyfriend. And that's what I want to admire. The third one would be security. Somebody that I, that I feel secure with, that he, he, give, he makes me feel comfortable, that I don't have to be checking the phone and seeing where he's at know that I feel secure that okay you're gonna go out with your boys go out with your boys that to me is security oh. and the fourth one is that we have fun anywhere like I want to have fun with somebody on the beach here in my apartment at the movie theater like yes. I just want somebody that makes me laugh That's good attitude everywhere you go you don't have to worry uh -huh. about your wings or like they're just go with the flow people mm -hmm. like I'm like that is my guy if you find two of those give me one okay exactly. <laughs> Okay, so tell us about what have been, these are other questions that we have here. Are the three most hardest breakups we've had? I was, I have three kids, so. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> but but you said, you said recently that your last breakup was very difficult because it was more so because of the surprise. Yeah, um. That one was really hurtful. Um, I guess, yeah, my girl's dad's obviously there were big breakups for me, but this last relationship was so hard for me because I felt the most connected with him, the most connection I've ever felt in any relationship with mm -hmm. any person. Um, and like I said, I took time off social media and I literally was just, all that time was dedicated to this person. I spent every single day with this person and I just felt so in sync with this person. Me and this person shared so much in our past that was like crazy. Oh, so you um, knew him from, from the past? Yeah. The, oh. He knew my dad, which I've moved so much in my life that no one knows my family, you know? Uh -huh. um, it was my family, but he, his family was intertwined with my, like he knew my family. Um, and we had, we ended up, we ended up living in the same house together when we were children. Cause my dad sold his house to his, no, his dad sold his house to my dad. Like we had things like we went to the same elementary school together. I have never had that like attachment or closeness with someone before. And it was just so, I just felt like this is surreal. I've never experienced this with someone before. And I just felt so like, we just had so much in common and it was it was surreal so when i found out how did you how did you find out that he was living basically a double life like that's insane so you think this whole instagram thing helped him that he didn't have social media that he probably didn't on purpose obviously um so he had facebook but he wasn't an active person but the thing is okay so this is a, this is a little scoop so he was a he's a veteran um mm -hmm. He was struggling with PTSD and he, he got off social media because he said it was just triggering for him. So I respected that, you know, like you guys say red flags, but I totally respected that from him. Um, so I was okay with the non-social media. And then, so 
me too spending so much time with him and the more that I spent time with him, the more I grew to like him. Um, what was I say? <laughs> I got like lost in the That thought. the more, that the more you grew to, to, to know him. Oh yeah. The more I grew to know him, like there was no red flags at all with this guy. But anyways, like going to how I found out, um, everything was going good. And then one random day, I get a hey girl message. You know those hey girl messages. Oh my god, yeah. Life. But it was from the girl's best friend. And the girl messaged me. She said, Hey, how do you know so and so? He's been dating my friend for a year and a half and she's pregnant. Oh and I thought, oh my God, this girl's probably because I've been dating the guy a solid three months. I'm like, oh my God, this girl's probably like four months pregnant. Totally understandable. Like I have to be okay with this because like, wow, like, you know. And I, I, and I respond, I said, hey, I've been dating him. Um, how far along is she? And she says, four weeks. <gasps> oh, my God. I, I, of course, I blow up his phone. No answer. All of a sudden, right? Uh -huh. Phone, show up at his house. And he he just had like a, like a, you know, when you catch them up, they just have like a blank face. And I just... Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't want it to be real, but I knew. I was just like, oh, I was just in shock. Like, I, I just felt like I was living in a daydream. Like, it wasn't real. Like, it's mm -hmm. just, how do you live a day? Like, how do you spend that much time with someone? How do you, like, it was insane. And that was it. How did he react? <sighs> this is the crazy part. And I'm telling you, like, I, all of my relationships had just something that happened. So my... I don't know what I want to say. I'm like, wait, am I getting too into it? <laughs> One of my exes, uh -huh. face when I um, confronted him, the same exact face, like the deer in the headlights, he had the same exact face. So when I confronted this guy, he had the same exact face, and I had this deja vu moment. And I'm like, uh -huh. oh my God. I'm reliving the same thing. I'm reliving this. Like, what the heck? And I, I just, I didn't want it to be true, but it was true. And Ay, ay, ay. But, but you know what they say, Crystal, they, they say that life is going to continue presenting the same experiences over and over until you realize what what it is. There's something that you have to figure out within you that you oh. need to not fix, but you need to work on within yourself that you're attracting these type of situations. It, I believe a lot that a lot of experiences from our past when we were young, where we were little, I for a fact have like, I know that people like, they always admire my relationship with my mom and stuff. But I had a lot of trauma growing up when I was little because my mom and my dad had a very bad separation and I was like the middleman between them. And that hurt me so much that I can guarantee you that all those things are so impregnated in my brain that I try to work on them. And I've gone to therapy many times, but there's many things that happen to you when you're young that they present themselves again when you have relationship with with other people growing up so definitely if, if you feel that you relive this the, the situation and it's because you're repeating and it's because something that it's there that you need to work on but like i i agree yes and this one but this one was different this last guy I dated he got me good he had no mm -hmm. reason, nothing similar to my exes it was he caught me straight out the blow um but what but like you're saying it you're so right about like things that happen in your past you don't realize that you carry with you and mm -hmm. uh, i can say like like you shared about your parents mine is like i didn't have that relationship with my mom like it was like that relationship of abandonment exactly so I, I, this, this is two things that i get often is like i know i have abandonment like so when i when someone comes into my life i want to cling i want uh -huh. to and then the other thing is um, I always see the good in people or I want to see the good in people. I, I try to focus on the good in people. So I'm like, no, I'm like, he's a good guy. No, like he's, he just has like, you know, the PTSD. No, like I kept trying to like see the good. In, and I do it like I, I always try to like highlight what's best in you mm -hmm. and to back these other things that are like not so good, you know, because I'm, I'm trying to hold on to you. Yeah. I have I have issues like that too. Like for example, mine are fear. My father was um, he, he was by the gorilla. He was killed in Colombia by the gorilla. So my fear is always that the people that I love most are going to be taken away from me like out of nowhere. And that's why I take so much care of Cupid. Like people think that is weird, but that's that's why I am like that because I feel that one day out of nowhere, people are gonna the people that I love most are going to be taken away from me. 
And that's why I do the same thing. Like I cling to people and and it's because of fear of like losing the people that I that I love most. And the other thing is that my mom was very insecure with my dad. She would always like stalk since since we were little, like and she was stuck with us. So that taught me that that's that's the norm. Like that's normal for me, like to stalk men because I saw that in my mom. But these are things that I keep working on on a daily basis. And every time I feel that I do mature more, every relationship, I feel that I act with more maturity. And I definitely feel that I'm getting closer to the person that I'm looking for. But that's a good thing to learn with your mistakes. And then in the next one, okay, I'm going to try to be better in this that I, that I, that I didn't do right the, the, the last time. I'm going to do that better this time. So definitely, I think that it's about that. And, and I personally, I feel that it hurts less each time. Do you feel the same or no? This one hurt. <laughs> <laughs> No, um, it hurts. It hurts. No, like you, you back, bounce back easier, no? Or no? I feel like because I have, I'm wiser. Uh huh. And it, like it's easier for me to cut off. Uh huh. I would cling. I'd, I'd make excuses yeah. for him. I'd exactly. Be, yeah. Work through this. People have have gone through this. And now I'm like, like this last one hurt me. Like I'm telling you, it really, it truly hurt me. Yeah. So I expected it from him, um, but I cut him off like nada. Like. As soon as I left his house and confronted him, blocked, 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 uh -huh. blocked, blocked. I'm never yeah. Done. done. Like I'm. Done. And when you I'm when you go through these type of breakups, like how do you how do you affront them? Do you go out more or do you stay more at home? Like what are your what is your routine when you break up? Oh yeah, yeah. I will. This one, I just felt like this one like was really hurtful. So this one was like you kind of stayed home for a little bit. I wanted to uh -huh. lay. I was like so sick to my stomach for like a week. I had no appetite, blah, blah, blah. But like I had, I knew I had to keep a routine. I knew I had to get up in the morning, do my hair, do my makeup, go to the gym, regardless. Even if I feel like crap that day, even if I want to like cry all my makeup off that day, I'm going to do it anyways. Like I, it was just non-compromisable things that I had to do every single day. Um, but just doing things that made me happy. And I knew like certain mm -hmm happy and that means like getting dressed up like if I have to go shopping if like doing stuff like that talking with my friends like distracting myself just doing things that I like like I went I just spent like time just book things like I went golfing like three times that week I went like to keep yourself busy yes like I have to keep myself busy and keep myself going because if you let yourself be lonely and soak in that like it'll start playing tricks on yeah. you that's how I used I used to be like that in the past like I would just become an introvert and I wouldn't want to talk to anybody I wouldn't want to go out this time around like the few times the last few times like I start pushing myself like I swear to god that I, I won't even want to work like it definitely affects my other aspects of my life like I don't know how to separate my love life from like my work life from like my friend's life my family life even with my mom here like I, I haven't had any re current relationship or but I have situationships <laughs> And sometimes okay. situationships and textationships, <laughs> they hurt you more sometimes than actual relationships. So that's, that's where I come from. Like, I just have situationships. So whether I'm talking to somebody or whatever, like, I invest a lot. Like, and mind you, I'm not the type of person that I don't like people that often. Like, I will like one person every two or three years. Like, I swear to God, that's how I am. And it's, I wish I wasn't like that. I wish I would like people more frequently. But I'm the type of person that I don't like that. I don't connect with that many people so when I actually like someone like I go full force and I want everything to be perfect like I try my best and with the last person that I was talking to like I felt like I was becoming like a Stepford wife like I just wanted everything I, I was very like very math, math math about it like okay if he if he doesn't text me I'm not gonna text him back this is gonna happen so I'm gonna do this and this and this and this so I was like very worked up so I feel sometimes that when you when you try too hard for things to be perfect, like they just they're not they end up being worse. So to me, like those things do affect me. And, and for example, I won't want to work. Mm -hmm. I won't want to go online. I won't want to create content. I won't want to go with my mom out. Like my poor mom had to once like she experienced something, I become very impulsive. And sometimes like I throw my phone and I do things that I, I really shouldn't. But, but definitely I'm, I'm also like you, like I, I, tr I, this time around, I try to force myself to like work out because I definitely feel that working out has a very big impact on the way that you feel emotionally. If the, the times that I go and work out outside, 
oh my god, I come back like I feel so much better. It's like I feel like relieved, like I did something for myself. And at the end of the day, it's about that, like feeling good about yourself, even in these hard situations. Exactly. And I'm like, I was like, unfortunately, I feel like I almost like thrive through these times because I'm like, when I'm happy and um, go God, like, look at me, I just appeared with the guy for three months because I'm all in la la land. But then as soon as like I go through things, I push harder. I push. So yeah. Hard. No, like, no. I think that I the most difficult thing is cutting someone off after you cut the person off, like, every day becomes a little bit easier. It's just that you have, you have, have that strength to like cut it off completely. It, like, it, like you said, with every experience, I think it's become easier. The easier part for me is cutting them off before like I let them linger around or, you know, I let them text me still, you know, I want to see them suffer. I want to see the text messages of please come back, you know, uh -huh. now done, get out. Like, don't and when you, when you go through breakups, do you stress eat or do you like not eat at all? Unfortunately, this one, I was sick to my stomach. I was, really? You didn't even want to eat? I was so sick to my stomach. I was like, had no appetite. I, I had the energy. Yeah. I was at the gym. I don't know on what, but I wasn't eating. But I was just sick. Like, when I'm happy, I'm eating. I think that's why, like, I, I gained weight over the holidays because I was enjoying life. I was cooking every single night. We were barbecuing. We were enjoying. We were going out and all that stuff. So when it happened. How long did you date him for? Three months wow yeah, did so you meet that did you ever meet the girl or no did she ever talk to you personally or not at all the girl only the best friend wow i even the best friend i had like i'm sorry but i had to block everybody because i don't want to be part of the situation anymore yeah. I said my you just story. removed yourself I apologize i'm sorry I, I did not know this is news to me this is but so if anything you didn't have to apologize she was after you I, but I just blocked everything. I didn't want to see it anymore. I have for my mental, like, I don't want to know because like the best friend was like giving me little updates and stuff. And I don't want to know anymore. Like I'm done. Like, I don't care what happens. Like I had to like, of course I was like really angry, but I had to tell myself, you know, compose yourself. And I just said, you know what? I wish him the best. You don't, I don't, you don't get any more time out of me anymore. Yeah. You wasted three months of my life that I will never get back. I'm so hurt and so offended. I will not waste another second on it. Everyone's asking here, how, what happened with Taylor made bands? Um, <laughs> okay. I'm going to read some of these questions. Dwight is here. Okay. I'll give Dwight a shout out. Cause I say this and he knows this. Dwight was my healthiest relationship. Uh -huh. So shout out to Dwight because he did treat me good. He treated me so good. And he was like the first relationship where there was no cheating. There was uh -huh. no, um, he made me feel secure. He made me feel like a princess. He, uh, we had all these adventures. He, even though we were um, long distance, constant communication. Um, and we, I just felt like, like you said, every time you meet someone, you feel like you're closer to the one. And you know, when I was uh -huh. with him, I didn't know if he was the one or not. You know, I, I'm trying to figure that out. But he showed me, yeah, I do want to, because before him, I wasn't, I didn't date someone I was into fitness. The he, problem with him was the distance, right? Yeah, the distance. Uh, but he showed me that that is what, uh, that's the type of person I want in my life. Like, I want to be attracted to him. I want to be able to work out with him. Um, we were working together. So it was nice because we, we helped each other. And um, you think there's no possibility of getting back with him? No, and I, I, I say this, we dated, I want to say, like, I think we dated like eight months and we just never took it to the next romantic level. We never said, I love you. We dated. We had such a great time. And I felt like, like you guys said, like you saw the chemistry and stuff, but mm -hmm. not romantic. Like, I can't explain it. Like, unfortunately, like I broke up with him, like, like four months and I broke up with him for like a week because I'm like, you're not the one for me. You're just not the one for me. And then after a week, mm -hmm. I'm like, such an idiot. Maybe I just can't realize that a healthy relationship is what I need. He's a healthy man, you know? So I got, we got back together and then four months later we broke up and then I'm just like, I knew he wasn't the one for me, but I enjoyed that relationship so much. And he showed me so sometimes much. Sometimes people, they're good, they're good, but they're not good for you. That's yeah, something you I, need I, to learn how to, how to love, differentiate. Of him and I give him, and I say this, like he was my healthiest relationship. I respect him and I admire him and say nothing but good things about him. Uh, but he wasn't my person, unfortunately. And it sucks because you're like, oh, he's a good one. But he's not, he wasn't mine, you know? Yeah. 
there's another question that they ask was he the one that got away or have you ever do you think there's a guy that you feel oh he's the one that got away or not really no i personally don't feel that for anyone because i feel that what's meant for you won't pass you by mm -hmm. like whatever is meant to stay and i just feel that i just haven't found the my perfect match but it's not to be together going back you know or like trying to rekindle that but i'm like yeah Each of mine have just taught, have been a learning lesson or has, has needed to be something that happened in my life. And like, I just feel like, okay, I had my three girls, but then now these relationships that I haven't had children with, um, like Dwight and then this last guy, um, it just showed me like what I want, like what I truly, mm -hmm. like, it really, ha like you said, I'm, I feel like I'm that much closer to me. Yeah, me too. Oh, <laughs> I know it's out there. I'm close. I'm I mean, too. I feel the same way. Crystal, what is your love language? Um, gifts. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay, but I will say, I know this about myself. I'm the type of person, you come in through the door and you say, I have a gift for you. I can't focus on the conversation. I don't hear nothing oh you say. Oh, my God. Just, let me open it. Let me open it. Like, it's like on Christmas Day. Like, it just... I just, I don't know. I'm like, okay, so this last guy that I dated, I'm like, th this is the crazy part. <laughs> My dad was always like that. He always brought, like, every time he went to the store, he would always come home with a little something, a little candy, a little, a little something for you every single time. And this last guy I dated, he did that every single time too. He didn't know that my dad did that. I'm like, oh my God, he reminds me so much of my dad. And I love that. Like, it could be a little chocolate. It could be, he brought me flowers. He brought me like, he would, he would pick up something that I needed for the house. Like he, it was just that love language of just like always considering me wherever you are and then thinking like, oh my gosh, this is for her. Like every time you see something like, oh, she would love this, you know? And that to me, and yeah. I think like, a gift or two, I'm like, Maybe that's not your love language, but that's how I show my love because I like to the give. Details, yeah. I try to spoil you. I try to like throw stuff at you. Yeah. You mine, are, mine are words of affirmation and um, um, what's it called? The time, like spend time. Oh, quality, quality. quality time, yeah. Yeah. That's definitely yeah. mine. But the way I show mine is also with gifts. <laughs> like I like people to show me with words of encouragement or whatever words of appreciation and quality time but I on the same way like I love gifting people and I like giving surprises and if you say for example oh I, I like this shirt I'll get it for you uh, on another day or whatever that's the type of person that I am that is yeah me. I'm on just, the same way I'm just like, I'm just like I see it and I'm just like this person would love this or like oh this holiday is coming up I'm already thinking about this next person it's just it's how my mind works and it's the same like when I I feel like when somebody does that to me I'm like ooh ooh like it just <laughs> all of me. like I can't help it like, I can't okay help that that leads to another question what's the dumbest thing that you've done for love forgive cheating <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Oh my god. Hold on. Huh? <laughs> I need a shot for that one. <laughs> I don't remember what's the dumbest thing I've done for love. There they for no breakups that I've I've had. Look, I know that I don't show too much on the ground because I'm very private, but I had really bad breakups and that's probably why I'm still single. One of my worst breakups that I remember was um we were also like three months and we were pretty much living together. He was like sleeping in my, in my apartment, like for three months already. And we were dating and I started to think, you know, when you feel girls, I swear to God, women have that sixth sense when insane. something isn't right. Like you just feel it inside you. And I felt it and I confronted it. I'm like, look, you're not acting the same. Like something's going on. And he, no, no, no. Is that I've been super sick and this and that. I'm like, I, I felt it within me. And I asked him and I said, I'm going to ask you one more time. Like, is something wrong? Because I know that we pretty much, we moved into this very fast. So if you want to like give ourselves time, let's just do it. Go your way and I'll come. And if we're meant to get back together, we will. But I don't want you to be here if you don't want to be here. Yeah. Like I want you to stay, but because you want to stay, not because you feel committed to. No, no, I swear to God. So that night we were in my, I remember we were in my apartment. We fall asleep and I go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. But back then we had blackberries, mind you. This is a <laughs> long time ago. So he's sleeping there and he would never lock his phone. Never. So I went to sleep, so I went to sleep and I came back and I laid in my bed and I was just looking up and I 
I swear to God, I was like, God, let me please fall asleep. I need to fall asleep. I don't want to check his phone. I don't want to check his phone. I knew inside of me that he was cheating on me and I didn't want to see it. So I got up again and I crawled. I remember crawling. I grabbed the phone and I'm like this. And I go outside to the living room and I start. And I remember that that was a Tuesday night. This was December 14th. <laughs> I remember like yesterday and I started scrolling. Tuesday, I didn't see anything. Monday, I didn't see anything. And then Sunday, I found a conversation with a girl and I'm like, fuck. And then the girl's like telling him, hey, your dinner's ready. Like he had the same thing, another relationship. But she knew about me. I didn't know about her, but she knew about me. So she was like the official side chick and she didn't care. She's like, oh, dinner's ready, whatever. And he's like, oh, okay, I'll be there. I'll be there later. And she's like, buy condoms. I don't, I ran out. And he's like, okay, I'll get them. And I'm like, no, girl, girl. This guy is in my apartment. I swear to God, I grab the fucking Blackberry and I throw it on his head. And I'm like, get the <laughs> off out of my house. Get the fuck out of my house. I was screaming like I was a crazy person. Oh, no. but he was so scared. He woke up like, so like, what is going on? <laughs> He's like, oh. what happened? I'm like, get out of my house. We never talked again. Years <laughs> later, we became friends again. But that was like the <laughs> worst. That was the worst, the worst breakup that I had in, in forever. Like that to me was, that was a hard breakup. I've had three hard breakups. Another one, another one we break up and I, I run into him in the beach and he's like, oh, let's go out tonight. And I'm like, okay. So I tell my girls, get ready. I'm, today we're going to get back together. And I was so happy. And the guy picks me up and I'm with my two girls and I'm like planning that we were going to get back that night. I go and the car is, he's outside waiting for me in the car. And I go walk and I, when I see him, there's a girl. He picked me up with a girl. What do you mean? Yep. He picked How? me up with another, uh-huh. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking that we're going to get back together. And he picks me up with another chick. At that moment, I'm like, what the hell am I going to do? Do I, do I go back and cry? Do I get in the car? Do I say something? <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to be, huh? The same guy? No, this is another one. No, no, no. This is oh, another one. That's what I'm telling you. I've had my fair share of bad breakups. Oh, God. He picks me up with another. And I'm like, I look and I'm like, what the hell am I going to do? And I'm like, let me just get on the car. And I get in no, the car. Every Yes. I get in the car with my friends. My friends were, were with me and they knew, they saw my face. They're like, what the hell? Why did we get on? And I'm like, dude, I'm going to pretend like nothing happened. I went to the club and every five minutes I would go to the bathroom to cry and put my makeup back on and pretend like I was fine. <sighs> that was the worst. I'm telling you, I've had such bad experiences with love. That's why I'm like, <sighs> damn, sometimes when, when I think of all those things, I'm like, dude, do I really want to be in a relationship? Because I live such a, I live a very, very fun and like at peace life yeah. by myself. So I'm like, do I really want to like, no. But I just feel at the end of the day that it's just haven't been the right guys. And before I would get upset and I would hate, I would hate on the guy, I would hate on the girls and I would be like salty. And nowadays I just, when somebody doesn't pay attention to me or when some things don't develop, I just think to myself, I'm like, he just wasn't the one. Like sometimes you just have to have that emotional connection. And if he didn't feel it, how many times has it been also that guys hit on you and you don't feel it? And everybody tells you he's such an amazing guy and you just don't feel it. So you can't hate on a man that doesn't feel the same way, even if you consider yourself such a badass woman or whatever, it's just yeah. sometimes it's, it's emotional. You just didn't connect. And I'm very mature now about that. Like I just, okay, it didn't work out and on to the next. <laughs> uh, I know I had this conversation the other day with a woman in the gym and she was like, why do you feel like, why do you feel like it never works out with the, with your daughter's dad? And I'm just like, I feel like it was a progression of me becoming the woman that I am today. Mm -hmm. And when I had mm -hmm. entered these relationships, I wasn't who I was today. I had no, to me, you know how, this is the thing I, people would always say, know your worth. Uh -huh. Worth because I, I didn't feel worth of anything. I had no career. I had no education. I was here by myself. I had no family support. I had no money. I had nothing. I had a daughter. And so uh -huh. when I, my second relationship I got into that relationship there was someone that was being nice to me and mm -hmm. got into that relationship had had my second daughter and then when I got into the third relationship same thing I had no money I had no stable life I had no living I had 
I had nothing really going for me. I had no career. I had no Instagram. I had nothing, you know? So when somebody's being nice to you, sending you sweet texts, saying, hey, I love uh -huh. you. You fall for it, yeah. Nice to your daughters. What do you do? I went for it. Um, but then over the progression of that last year, like my third daughter's dad, that was my longest relationship. That one was like a prolonged, like four or five, three, four or five years. I don't know, because it was so off and on for so long. Um, but over those years is when I built myself. I built my career. I built mm -hmm. my business. I built my self-worth. I know my self-worth now. I know the type of person I am. I know I'm a good person. I know I can love someone properly. I know I can be in a healthy relationship. Like, mm -hmm. I was in fight, and it proved to me I can be in a healthy relationship. Like, I know I just need the right man, and I'm exactly experiences. Um, but I had to, I had to understand what my worth meant. Uh -huh. It took for me to work on myself, like to make me feel secure. Because before, when I didn't have anything, I felt like, okay, so in my last daughter's dad's relationship, I felt like I couldn't leave when when something stupid happened. I couldn't leave. Where was I gonna go? I was gonna be homeless, or was I, yeah. well, um, you know, or like I felt in my head, what, what, like it was always stuck in my head, like, oh my gosh, I already have two girls and two different dads, like oh my gosh, you know, I, I, I can't, you know, I can't go with someone else or nobody's going to want me. I had all those things in my head. I, I had no self-worth or self, like I didn't, I didn't admire like yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that self-worth now it's so much easier to like, be like, no, thank you. I'm not interested or just knowing mm -hmm. like, like, like you said, there's great guys. Like you may think he's great. He's interested in, like in us, but we're just like, no, like we already know, like, the type of person that we want like we've already worked through that i've already uh -huh. passed that i already like built something i've already experienced that i don't want to build with you i already know what i want and i'm very secure and i'm like i'm very just straightforward with knowing what i want and if you can't meet me there then do you think that um your career and what you've built on instagram and like the job that you now do has helped you like increase your worth as a woman in regards to relationships because I feel that too, like before, like I didn't, I, I, I did, I'm the same. I, I didn't value myself as much. Now it's like, I've, I've achieved so much and it's not that I, I, I don't want to give myself that much credit, but at, at the end of the day, yeah. Like you look at yourself and you're like, dude, I've done all that on my own. Like, why am I going to settle? Like, and at the end of the day, I feel that women nowadays, like you, you realize how good you can live by yourself, by working on your own, achieving your own goals. You don't need to depend on somebody for anything that it's like, why am I going to take shit from somebody when I live such a nice life? Like uh -huh. I'm happy with my little dog. My family comes. I have, I live near the beach. I live in an amazing city. I love what I do. I love my work. So if you come into my life, you're going to have to be better than all of that together. If you're not better than, than all of that together, I don't need you. Yeah. And I think that, 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 um, in, in the past, there would be that kind of like neediness where I felt that like that codependency. Yeah. Like now, I don't take shit because I truly like, I don't need, I don't need you to pay my bills. I don't need your company. I'm happy by myself. I enjoy my solitude. I literally can stay here on a Friday and a Saturday by myself watching Netflix and I'm happy. Like I'm literally happy. Obviously I will say I would love to find somebody. I, I think that Love is an amazing thing. And, and I personally love to share my life with somebody. When I've been in, in relationships, when obviously not during the shitty parts of the relationships, but riding bike with a friend, with your boyfriend, going to the gym, working out, enjoying the sun, laughing, like watching a movie. Like sometimes, yeah, you watch a movie by yourself, but it's not the same as laughing with somebody else. I mean, those things are, are amazing. But I will, I won't settle just to have that, you know? Like I enjoy myself... Either way. Add, add into your life and like you said like you can like, this is my thing i'm like i can pay for my own dinner i don't need you to pay for my exactly dinner. and a lot of women and a lot of women take the cheating and take all of that because they need that they need they need the dinner or they need to for them to pay their rent or their car or whatever i don't like i know and i don't blame like i was i a lot of my relationships were not um like there were not good relationships i like i feel like i'm very selective with what i'm saying I, I talked about this with javana i was like i have to be careful with what i say because i have i shared children with these men you know yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i have good relationships with them right now you know i'm not trying to jeopardize that but without the under the bus 
I did not have loyal relationships. Um, oh. And before I, I built everything that I have now, like, that's how I felt. I just felt like I, I've i had friends give me advice and just say, oh, like, you can forgive. You can just ask God, just pray about it. You can get past this. And you have to be so selective with who you take advice from. Be very... Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's another thing, too. Yeah. Because not everyone, like, you got to understand, there's women that are giving you advice. It's probably because they accepted that. I, I, I've learned, I will not accept that I did at some point and it's unfortunate because I was in a different place in my life and I'm, I've learned I, that is not, I can't. And you have to be careful with who gives you that type of advice because you like, look at their marriage. Is that a marriage that you admire? Is that the type of relationship you want with your spouse? Don't take advice from someone that you don't admire and respect and truly like is living the life that you want. So filter through that advice and do what's best for you. But yeah. They're asking also, there was a, a nice question that somebody asked somebody that just got out of a relationship and she's a single mom. What advice would you give to them? Um, me, what has helped me is just focusing on my kids, like doing what's best for them. So it's just like staying busy, literally day by day. Like what, what has to get done today? I have to take the kids to school, get them dressed. I have to go grocery shopping, take care of the house, do what I got to do. I'm like on grind mode. When you're a single mom, you're in grind mode. You got to take care of everything. You have to be the provider. And you have yeah, to how do you, how do you split your time between working out work and your kids? Fortunately, that's not like I've worked on this career for so long, for so many years that I've been fortunate enough to build it where I get to stay home and I get to provide and at the same time um, be there for my kids. I, that's exactly what I wanted. I said this from the very beginning. I want to be the one that drops them off at school and I want to be the one that picks them up at school. I want to be the one that gives them dinner and I want to be the one that puts them to bed at night. Mm -hmm. That's I don't want someone else to do that. That's, that's what I want to do as a mother. Um, but just taking day by day, doing what you have to do to get things done. Don't, like, if this man is going to be coming in and out of your life, do not focus on him. Whether he comes back in a month and makes things right and adds to your life, do not focus on him. Do what you have to do to take care of you and your kids first. Keep yourself busy doing that. And build something so that even when, if he does come back and he leaves again, you're not lost again. You know, he mm -hmm. leaves, like, that's fine. I got it. I don't need you. Build yourself where you don't need, you don't need him. Exactly. He your life, but you don't need him. I agree with that 100%. And do you feel that fitness has helped you a lot, like overcome all these situations? Like, do you, when you, when you go through breakups, do you work out more? Do you usually go more and put in more work and try to feel better about yourself? Way harder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, the same way, I immediately just start working out more. I want to diet. I want to look better. I want to feel better. Oh, that is me. I, I thrive off it. Unfortunately, I thrive off it. Like, when you guys see me gaining weight and eating, that, be, that means I'm happy. When you see me, like, hitting it in the gym hard, something happened. And I just say, like, when you're in the gym, you can't tell if you're crying because you're sweating so much. You can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> I remember one time, like, I was going through a hard time and I was on the elliptical and I was just crying, but nobody can see because you're just sweating. I just had my hoodie up and who cares, you know? Like, uh -huh. it just, it just helps me to work out and it really does ignite that in me. I feel like some people are the opposite. Where just yeah. Like, well, for me, it ignites that fire in me. Right? Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going full force. And are you, are you ready right now? Would you get into a relationship now or do you want to dedicate yourself a little bit of lonely time? I, I oh, you're open you're open I'm open because I'm not closed because uh -huh. I'm oh I'm like where is he like tomorrow but I'm not closed I, I never want to harden my heart and I've learned that over my failed relationships I will never harden my heart over someone of what they yeah. do right mm -hmm. that is I've been I I thank God a lot for that that no matter how hard my breakups have been and how hard guys have cheated on me my heart remains the same and honestly Believe it or not, I still talk to each of these guys that I told you tonight about. Yeah. They're still my friends, and I forgave them. And at the end of the day, they apo they apologize, and they knew that they lost a good woman. But I, I they weren't for me, and I wasn't for them. <laughs> and I wasn't for them, and I'm friends with them. But I I feel that my heart has never gone like cold, or I've never been like vengan. Nunca me tratado de vengar. I've never tried to 
vengeance, vengeance against somebody, nothing. Like every time something happens, I just leave it in God's hands. And I'm always God. I give me acceptance. That's one word that I pray for on a daily basis. I give my grace to God every single day. I tell him what am I grateful for? My, my family, my job, where I live, my puppy, everything. And the second is give me acceptance that whatever it is you put in my life, I take it how it is. I just want to play the cards that I am dealt and I just want to play them to the max. I don't want to complain about them. If my, if, if what he has destined for me is to be single, I'll take it as it is. I'll take it. And I just want him to give me that acceptance to live my single life to the fullest. And that's it. And if he has me to have kids, then I want, I'll accept that as well, but I don't want to force anything. In fact, Two or three years ago, I believe my, my mom wanted me to f freeze my eggs because my, oh, no. yeah, I went to Colombia to try and do that. And I couldn't because they tell you that, that you have to at least freeze 14 eggs. And yeah. I only got four, four eggs. So they told me you have to continue injecting yourself and coming every month to try to do that. And I'm like, I told my mom, mom, I'm not going to keep fighting this. Like, this isn't God's will. I like, I just want to leave everything in God's hands. If he wants me to be a mom i'll have them at 41 at 42 at whatever if j-lo had babies at 45 i'm like if that's my destiny then i'll let it be it but i'm not going to keep keep going against god's will like i i don't want to come here every month and another egg and another egg i'm like no this isn't what i want and so i gave up on on that idea and i i've always thought that if later down the road i would want to either adopt i i'm open to adopting now like ever since I had Cupid and I'm telling you, I didn't pull this puppy out of my vagina, <laughs> but I love him so much that I swear, I think, and I used to feel that I'm like, maybe I wouldn't have the same love for a, for an adopted baby than my real baby. But ever since I had Cupid and I'm like, I didn't have him have him, but he is like my baby. I would do anything for this little dog. So I feel that I would love um a baby that way so in, in in later down the road i would like that as well like that's that's an option for me um but yeah i don't have kids right uh, now but pressure just know what you want like i just feel yeah. like i read a couple of things like you need alone time and i'm just like i i i don't like when people push things on you because i'm like you yeah. don't but like I, I could be speaking for myself and just for anyone you don't know what people go through at the end of the day and like i will speak for myself I've been alone for a long time. Like, I don't have close family. I don't have grandparents. Mm -hmm. lives. I don't have aunts and uncles. I don't have cousins. I don't have anybody. Companionship is the closest thing I have, too. So when I was with my daughter's dad, that's the closest thing I have to family. And mm -hmm. me and my daughter's dad, like, like, and then people say, oh, you need to be alone. Like, you guys, most people don't experience that much loneliness in your life. And you understand, like, most of my life has been alone. I don't want to be alone. That's my choice. Like I want companionship. And I look yeah. forward to companionship. And I, I feel like God created so many people on this earth for us to be together. I don't feel like we're meant to be alone. And I, I want that. I don't mm -hmm. know who my companion's going to be yet, but I want it. And I'm not. I, gonna... I agree the same thing. I believe in love. Like I truly believe I'm happy by myself, but I definitely feel that life is fun when you're with somebody else, of course, and sharing experiences and sharing your life with somebody else. I definitely agree too. <laughs> someone i want to like i enjoy i enjoy being with someone like i i truly do enjoy like sharing because like, i feel like i i live a good life i feel like i'm very blessed and i just feel like i want to share that with someone i want to like i want to like do you with... ever go on apps or no i did for like a week and then i chickened out <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to say that. I guess I, I probably like still inactive. I went on there for like a week and I talked Do to you meet people, people through Instagram or not really. No, I, I I lied because I met my middle daughter's dad, my second uh -huh. daughter. I met him through Instagram, but that was before no. I, I did the Instagram thing. You know, I just uh -huh. met him um, but no, I've never. I guess Dwight, but then again, like you know, we work together. Um, you know how people say like, how many guys hit it you at, hit on you at the gym? How many guys hit on you at the gym? All right, nobody hits on <laughs> you. Yes, zero. Me too. <laughs> I just, all the time, like people just assume, like, oh, you're a cute girl. Yeah. Like, people assume, and it's 
even when you go out to eat, like, I don't, I don't, honestly, personally, I don't like apps either. I don't like apps. I would want the old fashioned way. I want to go somewhere for somebody like a friend to introduce me to another friend. In fact, the last person I met that I was talking to, I was, honestly, I was head over heels. Like, I literally, I'm so upset. Right now, I'm a little bit depressed over that one. Like, how dare you take that away from me? Oh, my God. Like, it was, I met him in a, like, we started talking in a holiday party. So it was very, like, nonchalant. Like, I like that. Like, because I feel sometimes the app thing is just very deceiving. Like, you, but if you meet somebody or somebody introduces, like, I like old-fashioned. I'm very old-fashioned. I like talking until 3 a.m. in the morning. I love that. I love feeling the butterflies in my stomach. Like, I'm very quinceañera type of love. Like, I love that type of love. I'm very old school. So that's the type of love I like. And, and the apps and everything, I feel that even through Instagram, that's why I tell you, I block people because I don't like, I don't want somebody to meet me through, through, through what I project on Instagram because I, um, I tell you, I know that I can be very deceiving. And sometimes people think that you're very sexy or that you're very out there. And I'm so far from that. Like, I swear, like physically, like my, physic, my physical does not go along with how I am internally. I swear. Like people, all they see is your boobs, your butt, your lashes, your big lips, but people don't see, I go to church every weekend. I love spending time with my mom. I'm always 90% of the time just with my, with my dog. I've been celibate for almost two years. I swear like things, people don't see these type of things. And I'm like, that's the type of person that I am. And that's why I want to meet somebody that isn't through Instagram, because I feel that Instagram just project something that sometimes people misunderstand it so i get that i was i got that for a long time too it's just like the stereotyping they would stereotype. yeah the stereotyping and i'm like i don't care anymore if you if someone even came at me with that type of attitude i don't even care to entertain it like that is that's a personal problem that's you you know you don't look mm -hmm. to you don't you don't even want to get to know me you don't even want to meet me you don't even want to exactly me then I don't really care. Like that's, you're not my type of person either. I don't want to put that around me. That's why as women also, like the, in, in, in the last, in the last thing that I've been speaking of, in the last, that the last people that I've talked to, like I've honestly given myself the opportunity to get to know these people well before anything, before kissing them, before sleeping with them, because women, we are the type of people that when you kiss or when you go intimate with somebody, you immediately all the red flags are gone. You don't see them. You forget about them. You just obsess with this I person. Like or, or at least I am that type of person that the moment that I kiss someone or I sleep with somebody, I forget about everything negative about this person. And I just want to obsess over them. And I just want to be with them. So with the last few people, like I've honestly given myself the opportunity to, I really want to get to know you. And if you're actually the right type of person that I want to pursue you, but I'm not going to obsess over you to then realize that you weren't the type of person that I wanted to be with in the first place, because that's how, that's how I've been in the past that I, I forget and I ignore all the red flags because I sleep with them or I hang out with them or whatever. And then this time I've actually given myself the chance to get to know every, the person that I've been talking to, because I really want to get to know them and I want them to actually get to know me too because sometimes they see you also as a trophy like they see you like oh whatever this and that and the moment that they have you like they don't want you anymore so it's like no do you really oh, want me for I, who I am or because of whatever it is that, um I've seen this meme and it was just like why waste your time pursuing someone they'll chase you for one to two years and then just to get you and cheat on you uh -huh. and like, oh my god story of my life <laughs> <laughs> for real <laughs> Just blowing me up blowing me up pursuing me pursuing me I give them a chance and they cheat I'm like oh my lord but I agree with you I feel like I'm the same with you like the intimacy part like uh -huh. once you give someone that intimacy like you have that connection with them and like you said you, you'll overlook red flags or you'll try so hard to make it work because you feel so connected with them uh -huh. exactly that's that's exactly what what happens always Let's see, what other questions do they have? I think I went through, guys, do you have any other? I try to go through all my questions here. Okay, this is a fitness one. How do you keep such a small weight and a big booty and thighs? Do you eat a lot of protein? Yes, every single meal. <laughs> That's your, your trick? Um, yes, and I, I work out lower body three times a week. Um, 
like well for my case like since i had the girls i made vanderbilt products like a big part of like i put so much emphasis on that so as soon as i delivered i've been sharing like earlier on my stories like my postpartum journey literally uh, right after Gigi, i put on my v-sweat like immediately you um, i you lost you bounced back so easy in this last right in this yeah. last pregnancy well, I feel like I not can't. easy, but but you look but, so much better. Now. Like you're the, the moment that you had Gigi, you had like the belly and and with the stretch marks and everything. But two or three months afterwards, you look so much better, right? Yeah, I I felt better. But the thing is, like I I just had to make it like a part of my life. Like I went full force. Like and I I say this to all women when they're pregnant because you know when you're going th when you're pregnant, you're going through the motions and you're going through all the body changes. You feel so discouraged and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm never gonna have my body back again enjoy your pregnancy your pregnancy uh -huh. part of a time frame it's gonna be over this quick so enjoy it enjoy the cravings enjoy the foods but once that baby's out it is grind mode it is time to get back at it there are no more excuses now it's time to like start investing to yourself again that's when you can start doing things about it so don't worry don't stress yourself out through your pregnancy when you can't do nothing about it but when you're done then yeah be active about mm -hmm. it like then you can probably put some pressure on yourself because we can start working on it now and that's why I, I i put on that visa i put on the job every day i slept look i didn't sleep in it um the only time i didn't have it on was when i was sleeping or if i was showering um <laughs> wrapped up um but i gained so much weight with gg and that was your hardest pregnancy i I feel like I just got really thick with her. And I feel like I gained a lot of weight with all three pregnancies. But with Gigi, I got really thick everywhere. Like, you see my postpartum, I, I like Yeah, it. no, the, oh, your before and afters of Gigi are insane. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, every time you post it, I'm like, oh, my God. And you look so different now because also since you changed the yeah. color of your hair, yeah. it's like a completely different person. Yeah. I know I've shared that. Like, I, I've met strangers. Like, I was, like, in Cancun one time and I was, like, having a conversation with someone and uh, they were talking about their weight loss journey. I was like, yeah, I used to be overweight too. And blah, blah, blah. They're like, no way, blah, blah, blah. And I said, yeah. Like, I showed them. They're like, oh, <laughs> that. And I'm like, yeah, like, you know, don't don't look past. Like, it is possible. This is why I, I stand here and I, I share my story. And I'm so transparent. And I, 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 I am, it's possible. And I don't like when people say, oh, it's not possible. Or, like, feel so discouraged. Like, I'm standing here before you. And I'm telling mm -hmm. you. So, like. I'm telling you from my own, I, I wouldn't tell you just because like, I'm trying to convince you of something. I'm telling you from my own experience, it is possible. That's another thing that I wanted to say, like in regards to the, to the products that I also feel that when you go through a breakup, like your self-confidence and your self-esteem, like you feel so, I don't know, like, or it has happened to me that, or when they don't, when they cheat on you, you feel like you're ugly. You feel like you're not worth it. Like it's insane how somebody's, else's decision has such an impact and it shouldn't be that way but it's crazy because for I, a, a, an ex-boyfriend of mine also obviously cheated on me and I would look at, at the girl's picture and I would say like what did, is she prettier than me like is she skinnier than me like what yeah. does she have that I don't have and yeah. it's insane how a breakup and men can make you feel that way in my case like I love the fact like with with what you were saying about the products that they definitely help like in that sense also increase your self-esteem like, I love working yeah. out every single day when I've gone through a breakup. That's my number one thing. Like, I'm not, you're going to have my, my ego or whatever. You're, you're going to make me feel bad, but you're not going to take this away from me. And I will work my ass off. And in fact, when I started Gel V, that was one of the main reasons. I had recently broken up with somebody and I went full throttle. Like, I'm, I, I'm telling you, I started working out and this guy, like, he's like, I can't believe that you became this fitness person like once we broke up because he cheated he he left me and he started dating someone else and I started the company and that's when I started working out and obviously I put in I put in the work for the company but also because I was going through a breakup yeah. and it was insane because that's when I started with Gel V with my fitness stuff and everything and I definitely feel that when you work for yourself and go to the gym and you feel good physically that also helps you internally to feel better about yourself yeah. I think the, the inside and the outside, they need to match. Like you need to work on your inside and do the work. Like I, I watch a lot of like YouTube videos and therapists and everything in regards to like self-worth and how to feel better about yourself internally. But also I think that physically, like it needs to have a balance. Like you also need to feel good about yourself on the outside yeah. 
mm-hmm. because that yeah. also like influences how you feel about yourself. It allows how people talk to you. And I like, this is what I say. Like I tell you guys how I get ready every single morning. I do my makeup. I do my hair because I set that precedent like that that at the tone at the beginning of the day like you know when you get your nails done and you like instantly have an attitude or you're just kind of like you uh-huh. know that's how I feel like at the beginning of the day I'm like talk to me nice you know like you're not gonna yeah. talk to me crazy you're not gonna talk to me disrespectful like I will not allow like people in my life to talk to me like that no mm-hmm. like I, I value myself and I take time and I invested into myself and I mm-hmm. have taken the time to take care of myself and build myself you don't get to treat me like exactly talk to me exactly. like that. I will not allow it like I don't entertain it. I won't you text me something crazy I'm not going to entertain it you bring up some drama I'm not going to entertain it like it's just you set that tone for yourself and when you mm-hmm. when when you value yourself and you take care of yourself and you invest that time into yourself you set that tone for others. Like they, they're not allowed, they know not to bring that up with you. They know not to talk to you like that. You, they know if they text you something crazy, you're not even going to respond. Like, uh-huh. it's just something you have to do. You have to set that tone. You have to. Another yourself. thing that, that you've always been very open about, like um, your extensions and all of that. Do you think that all these things help you also with your self-worth and all that? Like feeling Absolutely. better about yourself? I totally agree with that. I mean, yeah. my lashes, I need to do my lashes, my nails. And I need to go to the gym. Like, those are my three things that I always have to yeah. have done because that makes me feel more confident. Yeah. Because there's a lot of women also that when they become moms or everything, they, they feel like they let themselves go. And I feel that that's the contrary. You should always continue, like, looking and feeling your best, not even for the person that you're with, but for yourself. Yeah. Like, all those things, like, I definitely feel that investing all that in yourself definitely helps also with your confidence. I feel like do, I'm all for do whatever makes you happy. Uh-huh. Like, if, if if this makes me happy, it, it truly yeah, exactly. does. Like, I'm not doing it for anybody else. Like, there's too much work to do for anybody else. Like, I'm doing this for me. And, like, I haven't switched up for years. Like, you guys could see, though, whether with a guy, with not a guy, with this, with that. I've always been like this. And the same for you. If it makes you happy, do it. Like, exactly. Do what makes you happy. If you want to cut your hair short, what makes you love yourself more? Cut your hair short. If you want to, like, bleach it, bleach your hair. Uh, Do whatever makes you happy. Like, it's the same when it goes, like, more, um, like, if you want to get your lips done, if you want to do more, like, superficial stuff like that, if you want to get your boobs done, if you want to get your body done, do what makes you happy. At the end of the day, Mm -hmm. it's going to be your relationship with yourself. And it's how you're going to show up every single morning. If you're going to wake up every single morning, hating yourself, speaking down on yourself, how is that going to move you forward in life? How is that going to help you do what you got to do to make yourself happy? If that's going to make you ultimately happy. And that's like something you're struggling with. Like I'm really struggling with my weight. Work on it. Get up, Mm -hmm. work on it. Like do what you got to do to make yourself happy. Exactly. I agree. What else do we have? I think that's it, Crystal. What's your love language? Mm-hmm. Are you intimidated by you? Oh, my. Oh, okay. That's a good one. <laughs> I definitely feel that men could be intimidating. I, men could be intimidated by a strong woman. And it's mostly because what we had said in the past, because I feel that when you don't have, when you're, when you're not so established as, as self-confidence and on your own, you take a lot of shit. And you accept things. But when you have achieved things for yourself and you start feeling confident about yourself and you start knowing your worth, you start becoming intimidating because they feel that they can walk all over you anymore. I can't mess with her. They can't Uh meet you there. I Uh I agree with that. Like, I feel like before when I didn't have a lot going on for myself, yeah, I had guys hitting on me left and right. Now I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. I haven't had yes, I feel I feel the in, same way. In years, in years. Yes. And I'm I'm okay with that. I'm I'm so secure with myself because I'm like, I know that the right man, one, the type of man I want won't be intimidated. He will be someone that stands tall. He's gonna be yeah. confident. He's gonna be sexy. He's gonna be yeah. everything I want. I'm not worried about the guy that's too scared to talk to me because that's not my guy, you know? Uh-huh. I agree I'm, with that. I'm okay with that with the ones that are talking about. It's just saving me time. So you do you do agree that the opportunities have lessened the more that you and that's okay i kind of feel like they're filtering themselves you know like it's like they know that they can't i i feel like they know they can't meet you there like they know you're a type of woman that's gonna require a lot out of them and they can't meet you there, and that's okay like everybody's Mm -hmm. gonna have like i hope 
I know I'm not going to be their person. I want you to find your person too. I want you to be exactly. happy at the end of the day. Like yeah. I want the best for you. Uh, it's a mutual understanding. I just feel like before it's like, we. Well, I didn't know what I had going on. You didn't know what you had going on. Let's just see what happens. It was kind of exactly. like that. And now yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm not yeah. there anymore. Like yeah, I know what I want. That's what I was saying. I know what I want and I'm not going to waste my time. Like no. from the get go, I already know. I already know what's up and I'm not going to lead you on. And yeah. that's it. Either it's there or it isn't. Yeah, okay, so the there's a question that says, what is harder as you get older, staying in shape or finding a man? Finding a man. <laughs> yeah. I find it easy to stay in shape, which somebody else was saying there. How do you stay? To me, it's, I don't know what's your personal diet, but to me, oh, mad. Like, I believe 100% in inter intermittent fasting. Yeah. I usually eat one good meal a day, and then I'll have a small snack or my detox or whatever. What do yep. you think is what has kept you mostly in shape? In shape, what diet? Or consistent and having a schedule every single day, making sure that I am going to have some type of exercise that day. I'm going to mm -hmm. be like before I used to, like because I you guys know I'm a foodie and I enjoy food. But since January, I've been very very more aware of what I put into my body. And just because I I feel like I'm getting older, I have to really start taking care of this body. You know, I have I can't just uh -huh. keep eating my crap and putting crap in it and expecting it to perform as good as it does you know like i want the best for myself and i'm trying to like reach my full potential so you got to put the right nutrients in your body so making sure you take the time to put good nutrients in your body being consistent making sure whatever you buy at the grocery store is gonna like be good for you and not sabotage you it's not gonna set you back so just making conscious intentional decisions every single day to like get you closer to that goal to taking care of yourself exactly okay perfect i think i went through all of them i want to raffle three kids guys i have how do we raffle them crystal i, have, I don't know i have the v kit 24 hours the v kit plus and the travel kit so, um how do we raffle this the first person i think if they or whoever comments and then we randomly choose you choose the VKit plus i'll choose the VKit 24 hours and then you choose the okay wait, wait, wait. i'm gonna i'm gonna think oh, how come none of my comments are like none of my comments are popping i can't see my comments you can't see the questions i can't see any comments from anybody i i was yeah. at the beginning but then i can't see any comments anymore <laughs> i see everything all the questions are there talk about keep you all snatched so how did you find your friends? I need friends like that. Crystal, are you there? I think I lost Crystal. Crystal. I think your internet, your internet connection is. Oh, I see. I lost her. Let me add her back just so we can raffle. Okay, girls. So let's see. I'm going to raffle the three kits. I want you to comment right here. Which one do you want? V Kit Plus, V Kit 24 Hours, or the Travel Kit? And I'm going to choose one randomly um, and give it away to three people. Let me see. I think Ms. Suarez is bone probably. Okay, the first one that I'm going to give away is the, okay, let me break in. I don't know why Ms. Suarez, I lost her. Ms. Suarez is unable to join. That's weird. Okay, let me see. Hello? Oh, oh there. Okay, sorry, I guess my <laughs> I'm trying to get my comments back and then. Did you get, do you off. see them now? Yeah, I see them, I see them, oh, okay, I see them, I see them. Okay, okay, perfect. Okay, so how do we raffle these? I, I have the three here. Okay, somebody, um, somebody asked for Cupid. Here's, 
here's the love of my life. Here's my little munchkin. <laughs> okay, so I have the three kids here. How should we raffle them? Um, I think we should pick a number one through 20 and, and whoever chooses the first number. Okay. Oh wait, I have to pick only one of us. Let's do it. <laughs> Text it to you? No, I can't, right? If I get all okay. okay, I'll do the first one. You did the second one. Okay, perfect. I okay. 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 So you I see just, I think see of a number, Ms. Suarez. Ms. Suarez, think of a number and who whoever says your number first from one to twenty gets the V Kid Plus. Wait, no guessing yet. They're throwing out numbers. No guessing yet. Wait. Okay. Ready, set, go. I'll tell you when I see it. Nope. 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 <laughs> yes! It's Miss Flores. It's Miss Flores, number 17. Heart, heart. Okay, wait, she let me see her. it. It's Miss Flores. You see her? Write it down because I don't see it. I know! Hold on! It's Miss Flores. Hold on. All, all these comments are trending. Hold on. I'm trying to remember her name. It's <laughs> Miss Flores. It? it was something like that. Miss Blood is coming again so I can see your screen name again. It was like ITS underscore MS underscore Flores. Hmm. Where are you at? Where are you at? Where are you at? I don't see it. Oh, right there. It MRS Flores. It MRS Flores. Okay. Okay, perfect. I okay. That's the you first You got it. Story. Okay. Now I am going to raffle this one. So comment now. I already have the number in my head. It's my favorite number. Go. Oh, thank you, Michaela. I love you, girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I just saw I screenshotted for you, Crystal. <laughs> Guys, comment if you want the VK 24 hours from one. Yes, number one 20. through 20. I already have it in my head. I'm just waiting for it to pop up. Look at Michaela nope. getting in her shot. <laughs> <laughs> no, nope. Adi, baby. Nope. Keep <laughs> going. No. Nope. I see all my friends on here. Nora. <laughs> oh, I love all my girls. Nope. Girls support me. They're a Pepsi. You got it for. Oh, I didn't see that. Cool. I see it. P E B B B S Y underscore underscore. I screenshot it. P E B B S I underscore. Something like that. Y underscore underscore. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. And now, lastly, okay. Crystal, think of another number. Um, I'm going to think it? of an emoji. No, that's, that's too much. We'll be here all night. <laughs> it's just an emoji. Think of a special emoji. <laughs> I got a good emoji. I got one. I got one. Go. Wait, no. a, a number or an emoji? It's a, it's a food emoji. A what? A food emoji. Okay, a food emoji. Food. Whoever gets it right gets the V kit travel. Food emoji. Which one is it? <laughs> <laughs> yes! Uh, no, no, that's Alicia. it. It's not a foot. It's a food. <laughs> okay. Alicia the Aries got a taco. Hold on. Alicia the Aries. Hold on. Go back. Go back. Hold on. Okay, hold on. I gotta screenshot you. Hold on, because I you will... got it. I didn't see it. Oh, I got it. Something. Did on. you get it? Did you get it? Uh, I have her frozen on my screen. Hold on, Alicia, the Aries. Okay, I think I got you, girl. If anything, DM me and I'll see your thread pop up. Okay, perfect. Okay. okay, so there we raffled all three products. Thank you, girls, for participating. Thank you, Pico, for joining me in this live. I had a lot Thank of fun. Thank you for the love, love breakups, and we, fitness talks. We have to do it again more often. Cheers to that. Yes. Thank you, girls, for joining. We love you, girls. And hopefully, oh, remember your hopefully, code. Crystal, your code. I say hopefully. Oh, Crystal S10 is my code. So if you girls want to pick up one of those V kits, 
make sure you use crystal s10 at the checkouts hopefully next subject is more love and fitness and less breakups yes yes <laughs> yes hopefully hopefully next time we join again we're both in a relationship in a happy yeah. relationship I will, oh my god imagine double dates oh yeah in miami please in miami <laughs> oh, okay. I'm so down for that. Okay. Love you, girl. Thank yeah. you for joining. Bye. Love you too. This bye, guys. Bye.